How, how are you doing? How's your team? Uh, they're doing great. They're doing really good. Uh, in fact, I'm concerned. They're almost through the entire backlog of bugs, and I'm not too sure what to give them next. Maybe a project? I don't know. I was really hoping to keep them on bugs for another six months. Six months? You gotta give them something else, maybe like features, infrastructure work. You gotta mix it up or they're gonna burn out. I'm not sure they're ready. I'm nervous. Well, I think that we're gonna need to talk about the importance of balancing bug fixes with projects in today's build. Welcome to Build, brought to you by Pivotal Tracker. I'm your host, Pornima Vijay Shankar. In the previous two Build episodes, we talked about the importance of onboarding new hires and shared how you can pair or mob program. In today's episode, we're going to dive a little bit deeper and share why you want to not just give your new hires bug fixes, but also transition to have them work on some meaty projects. And to help us out, we're back with Chris Jobst, who is a senior software engineer at Pivotal Labs. Thanks for joining us today, Chris. Great to be back. Thanks for having me, poor Nima. So, Chris, you and I have been through the trenches, and you know a lot of times engineering leads and you know some companies, won't name any, will start new hires out with a lot of bug fixes, some menial projects. It's no fun, but they do this. Why? I think they don't trust them, ultimately. But it's such a great way to get people not to care about the product. <laughs> yeah. So at some places they do this for six months, you know, bug fixes and stuff. When does it make sense to actually move past this and give someone a meaty project? I think it's great to get them integrated as soon as possible. Mm -hmm. Fixing bugs can be a great way to learn about the code, mm -hmm. but you want to give them a mix. Get them on features. That's how they're going to really enjoy their job. So I assume there's some way you want to structure the project because a lot of them won't know the complete code base. There's going to be maybe some tech debt or other issues that come up. So what's a good way to set them up for success? I think that using pair programming mm -hmm. is an excellent way to both onboard them and get them into the code. Yeah. You can have somebody more senior kind of help them along as they're developing their first features. Okay. At the same time, doing some bug fixes can get them to learn more about how the code really works at a deep level. Yeah. And so what do you think the benefit is of doing that pair programming with a senior person? Well, they're going to ramp up a lot faster mm -hmm. and they'll probably learn a ton from the senior person. It's a great way to have your junior developers become senior very quickly. So they're probably going to come across some tech debt and may get stuck not knowing what decision to take or how one thing will impact another module. So what are your recommendations? I think new team members are the best positioned to see tech debt, yeah. where others may have kind of just put it off to the side for mm -hmm. later. So what they can do is they can bring fresh eyes and talk about it with their leads. Then the leads can help them understand what are the priorities right now mm -hmm. and how to prioritize those things. Okay. This makes them feel heard and it lets them understand what are the priorities of the project. So how do we gauge the success of a project? Because there's going to be a lot of learning and ramping up to do. So it's not like somebody can you know, do a release every week. Right. Well, I think it's really subjective, yeah. but a successful project to me is one that satisfies the users. Okay. If the users are happy, then that's success. Now, I know there comes a time for every software engineer where you've got to hunker down, do some bug fixes, do some menial work, clean up that tech debt. But how can you, as an engineering lead, message that, especially to your new hires? We have a weekly meeting to talk about the features coming up. You can make that actually a meeting about the chores and the bugs that need to get done. This involves a PM and gives the team a sense of unity. It can also give them a direction to go so they don't feel like it's just going to go on and on forever. And finally, make sure that they understand why they're doing this. It's all for the user's benefit and for their own. The code is going to look cleaner by doing the, co the chores and refactoring, and the bugs are going to solve user problems. Should there be a carrot at the end of the stick? Absolutely. I'm a huge proponent of celebrating success. So have the team go out to lunch or have a hackathon that gets them to take their minds off of it, do something else for a bit. In addition, if you have that weekly meeting, then you can set up your next feature and get them excited about it. So Chris, you've shared a lot of great tips when it comes to onboarding new hires. Any final words of wisdom for us? Well, this is a process that can always improve. And I think companies really do themselves a service by iterating and continuing to improve that. A healthy team always has new members joining because you're rotating your teams, you're getting new hires. So make that an enjoyable process for them. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much, Chris. This has been great. Thank you for having me again. It's been a really fun talking with you.
That's it for today's episode of Build. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel to receive more great episodes like this one. And be sure to share it with your teammates and your boss. And special thanks to our sponsor, Pivotal Tracker, for their help in producing this episode. Ciao for now. This episode of Build is brought to you by our sponsor, Pivotal Tracker.